I was just going through a lot of these pictorial explanations in my head as to why I'm doing what I'm doing um, as far as the absorption of uh, diffuse and reflected sounds goes uh, mainly because my goal is uh, image and depth and um, accuracy and precision in that uh, image and depth and then it, I started saying well why hasn't anyone done this absorption of surrounding um, the speaker and just focusing on the direct and apart from your knee jerk reactions of saying oh it looks stupid um, there could be ways of doing it very very discreetly like um, one thing that came to mind is if you had a, a dashboard already you have a instrument cluster cowling for your steering wheel um, and why is that cowling there? Like why do the instruments need to be shaded from the sun? Yeah, why? Well, so you can read the clusters so that the the light that you don't want doesn't interfere with the light that you do want. Knowing how fast you're going and how much petrol you've got. Um, and then I was thinking, well, you could have a cowling here and a cowling there, made up of the exact same material in appearance, and yet it's all absorbent and uh, non-reflective. Um, and the reason non-reflective I might get to later but you don't want it to act like a horn because when something acts like a horn I may as well do it now you've got to, to say a dome speaking here and you've got a, a cowling that you wanted to be absorbent so sound would not go through but you didn't want sound to bounce off um, the reason that that for me that I found in my experiments is that this point of release from the horn becomes your new it becomes the new source um, just because everything starts radiating from this point um, pressure is here pressure goes that way so diffraction all it all starts here and that becomes the thing that you uh, dictate distance and when your left and right ear can determine where a source point is, that's where the front of your stage begins. Anyway, so back to this uh, cowling. So let's just pretend this is a Lamborghini or a, a Ford Falcon, whatever. As long as this looked all right, like what would be the problem of having, uh, and in my dream build, which I haven't really started yet, the source of this tunnel could be anywhere inside the dashboard. It could go down, it could go uh, in any direction, but as, as long as that direction met up with the listening position, your source point is way back here. It could go back 20 centimeters, it could go back 30 centimeters. So the source is here, the protective absorbent material is here, and so the distance is now this point in space and so that would be the start of your stage depth it could be you know the start of the windshield for instance and with this new absorption method that I've been testing um, the degree of separation is insane so back to the main question why to start a new page why why do people have stereos in their house to listen to music? Um, they could listen in a field. They could wear headphones. Well, it's because that's where they are when they want to listen to music. So at least in rooms, people have said, well, make sure it's symmetrical to the corners, if possible. Like This is the same for studio monitors. Um, why do they say symmetrical? Why not sit 30 degrees off axis and stick your your workspace or your listening space in the corner. That's so that all this diffuse sound information um, is somewhat even so that the destructive image is adding to the evenness of you know the amplitude and the, the image whereas it would be better just not to have these but once again I don't know why anyone has suggested you know absorbers like in studios they say oh I'll put your absorber over here 
stick an absorber on the ceiling. You know, stop these first reflections with absorbers and in studio uh, design. Yeah, stick an absorber up. Well, I've been doing this, putting absorbers right next to studio monitors for a long time. Especially if you have a desk, you stick one just in front of the speaker. Um, stick one right next to the, the side speaker at least, if you can't have the visual intrusion of the one right next to the speaker on the inside. But yeah, it's getting a bit um, carried away with that. So, in a car, we are just totally effed to the next level because here's your infinite space, perfect listener triangle, uh, you've got perfect theoretical sound stage here if, if you were in a vacuum or in space, you need air. Um, how about we stick with giant reflective uh, glass object right beside that speaker? Oh yeah, that's a cool idea. Maybe we need one over here, exactly the same. But no, hang on a minute. It's going to be you're here, not here. And so this other giant reflective object is now giving you a different angle for this. all these bad things are coming back at a different angle. So they sound different to all the bad things that come off this one. So you're not even in the, the same ballpark as listening in a house or a studio or a theatre. So you're getting this off axis and the, here's your front window. Front window, you know, 90 degrees almost. Front window over here, not so much, you know, 60 degrees, whatever. So, and the times for this reflection are longer than this one. This is really quick, really fast. Um, so you're kind of getting uh, double whammy because of the asymmetry in a car. So I just was going through this phase where I was doing horns and waveguides. Let's go to the new page. <sighs> horns and waveguides. So I had a simple tweeter cluster with a mid dome and I had a six inch underneath Let's, we'll just leave that out of the picture for now because it makes it harder and I just started building little waveguides because I was interested you know a little bit with the increased sensitivity um, adding more direct there's adding more direct less ambient sounds and uh, I was getting pretty good results with that and I could tune for the phase, you know, 90% to how I liked it. And I could never really um, get this flange big enough to stop my old friend, the side window here, we're on right-hand drive cars. I was never getting this flange big enough to stop this side boundary uh, interference uh, or well, some people call it SBIR because side boundary interference response and that response is all about the combining of this sound with this sound so it's a definitely first reflection and the thing is if you just kept creating a hard shield on this side for this side uh, tweeter dome you would then start to get outside of the one quarter wavelength and you would be making a new SBIR off your waveguide. So there was a limit to how far the waveguide could go. Um, that was the limit there with building waveguides. So I just had a TikTok brainwave, uh, nothing to do with the company, and just went click. It was like a switch. So here's my dome, here's your launch surface. And in this case, this is just for um, demonstration. Let's just say someone's sitting right at axis over here in your really reflective environment called a car. So let's just call this. We'll do it in. We'll do it in um, sixths. Now let's do it in eighths. So one, two, three, four. Let's do it in sevenths. So this first seventh, they say, oh, you want you want this? Um, because this makes your head with your ear 
and your other ear let's make sure this is top down so that you can tell where this object is in space because your left ear and right ear have the certain delay and certain amount of uh, cues from the um, what's the head thing called head related transfer so if you're on a different angle if this was slightly over here then your ear right ear and left ear could tell where that was in space but we're here and so that's one seventh of here now this other seventh that is going say this way um, is just going into space creating uh, more opportunities for back information off objects so we have, we have plenty of objects so it's, it's not a pretend game here this one here can also start dispersing uh, refracting right? but that's only one seventh so here you have another one seventh going somewhere you don't want another one seventh going somewhere you don't want hitting things and here another one seventh going somewhere you don't want like especially off glass surfaces getting some more stuff we don't want and here um, straight off things and I was going to talk about this one seventh as well this side refraction of a baffle even just the mounting baffle or the faceplate of a tweeter this is called uh, baffle uh, diffraction and so every one of these points is a new refractive launch point with a slight delay all right so when they talk about baffle uh, shape changing the profile of your frequency response it's because of all of these different launch points it's like a gradual launch point is mixing with this direct sound with all of these other baffle refractions so um, you might see people who do speaker designs where the speaker is in an egg enclosure that's to minimize the baffle uh, influence of the uh, the direct so I think that's getting pretty messy now let's just do this last step we'll kind of try and wrap it up somewhere so I just said let's keep this the bit we want it's a keeper and let's just absorb remember we don't want a horn because the horn will change the starting depth let's just make all the other angles hit this material to the best of our ability and be absorbed yeah, goodbye the black ink and then some of it will come through Ooh, little doop. Doop. there's bugger all baffle diffraction because I have pretty soft uh, material just there and as, we'll get as close as we can with this absorber and see what that sounds like I mean part of part of the why do something my answer is and um, I have to say it's also a question I have to say I'm very glad that I went down this little personal rabbit hole and I'll probably try and explain um, in other videos how good it is like maybe since I've been doing proper phase alignment um, five six years this is the best depth and stage I've ever heard and I've only properly constructed my second prototype now um, which is not in the previous videos and it's only on one side and the stage improvement is incredible so I've just got to keep building prototypes left and right left and right 
and even try and get to that Lamborghini interior where it'll look okay and the whole why, why are you doing this it looks stupid people can just go and you know mount their speakers wherever they want so I'm being polite I'm going to make these little tunnels that come from the dash that make it as far as the windshield and um, absorb everything else um, so there you go